So it's recording. Hey, and a friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy This, That, and the other thing. And I've got my friend Stanley on. He's in Singapore. How are you doing, Stanley? Hi, Brad. How are you doing? So it's morning over there. It's evening over here. That's it's right. That's right. It is. It's <laughs> 8 a.m. right now. Okay. How about how about you over there in the evening? 6, 10 p.m. 6, 10, yeah. That's, I think that's fascinating because we can talk in real time. This is amazing to me how you can do this. This conversation. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to talk a little bit because uh, you know things are probably different in Singapore as they are here, but we're in a similar group with uh, with affiliate marketers and things of that sort. So I just yeah, wanted yeah. to talk about yeah, some I got, stuff. I, I I I got a a question for you, right? Yes. I've got this Amazon account, Amazon affiliate, right? Yeah. And uh, because it was inactive, and then the Amazon say that you know what. We're going to uh, 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 let the account lapse, so because there's no activity on it, right? Let's say if I want to get it reactivated now, uh, have you have any experience like that? How do I go about doing it? Well, interestingly enough, I just recently started doing that because I had let mine lapse also because I was doing some stuff and I was doing that arbitrage stuff, like you know, using eBay and selling on Amazon stuff. And it's just too much work. And then uh, after I found this wealthy affiliate group, I learned so much more. So it encouraged me to get it going again. So I just recently did that. Is it this morning or yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Oh, okay. And it's not that hard. I had to send a, a message to Amazon and they explained how to do it. And all you have to do is go in and you select, you, you got to re, re uh, assign a store. You just name okay. the store. And do you remember it had the store name and then it had like, dash 20 yeah. at the end or dash 30 at the end that's correct yeah yeah it's just redoing that and then it's okay done. so it's pretty simple even though most of this stuff there's one thing to do but there's a thousand things around it so it's yeah, hard to find because, that, that yeah, needle in yeah. the haystack you know yeah because that's a pretty complicated form there yeah there's a lot of things that you have to do but you don't really have to do them you only have to do that one thing is establish that store again you okay. can use your same email that you opted in with and your same password. You just have to redo a store. And okay. Then, and then you got to put okay. up you know, all your websites. You got to put all your websites that you're going to be promoting products on. And what yeah. I did was I, I, got, I got multiple blogs. So I put all those blogs in there. And yeah. there's some questions you have to answer, like, like what are you going to be selling and how are you going to be selling it? That okay. Kind of Does it have to be the, the same product or it can be any product? Well, I did it with any products. I did because I've got one that's about lifestyle. I've got another one that's about marketing. I've got another one about my magic entertainment. I've got two for my expos. I've got one for wealthy affiliate membership. So I have multiple across the board. And basically my target markets are event planners, mm. marketers, and then uh, the lifestyle stuff. So I okay. put all of those blogs in that little listing. Yeah. And then they ask, well, who are you going to be marketing to? And I said, you know, event planners and, and business uh, marketers. And, yeah. Yeah. and they accepted it. So far, it's so good. Unless they do something tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other question is, since we're talking about this and we are trying to reactivate it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I heard some things about, it is more difficult to become an affiliate with Amazon right now. That, that's is it still, true? Or, or? Well, the, I guess a little bit more difficult, but if you're above board and you're legitimate and all that, it's, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, there's okay. some things like you have to, like if you're going to be having a check sent, um, then I think the threshold for money ends up being uh, $100 because they got to mail it. Yeah. Whereas if you hook your bank account up to it, the threshold is ten dollars. Okay. So for somebody who's new, do they need to get their website ready? Do they need traffic on their website, or they can just set it up and apply for the affiliate uh, program? They do ask how much traffic you've got, but they seem pretty lenient on that. They had, I think, um, I think like is either fifty or five hundred visitors to like five thousand. Mm -hmm. so so they're okay if you got small amounts of traffic, but you do have to have some websites. Otherwise they go, how are you going to do this? You know? Yeah. 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 
Okay, so somebody new will need to set up a niche website, have some idea of who they're going to sell to, what are the types of product, and then they go to Amazon affiliate, fill up the form, right, and, uh, and just wait to get it approved. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about uh, Wealthy Affiliate, you know, that, that uh, program that I learned about this stuff, is I think you can make, is it 25 websites? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you, it's good to get your niche. I've got what I call entrepreneurial ADD because <laughs> I'm all over the place. Yeah. You know, I, I get some ideas of like, like football, you know, not soccer, but American football. American football, yeah. They're very passionate about that. They're fans, yes. they're fanatics yes. at it. So if yeah. you can find something like that, that people will buy those products, you know, products from the Minnesota Vikings or the Miami Dolphins, Mm. If they're very passionate about it, you could probably do the same thing with like soccer, you know, football, football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've got some other ideas like in my event planning world, I want to target some stuff with restaurants. I want to do some stuff with magical entertainment. You know, I've got a lot of different ideas like doing a, the print on demand t-shirts and things like that. So I've got a lot yeah, of different ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some print on demand t-shirts, uh, 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 set up, but uh, it's been there for a while. Uh, uh, but like you say, you know, sometimes you're so busy with so many things, right? Well, so you gotta now find it's time, now. Now it's time to consolidate it, right? To make you it have, work. You have to find the niche, the the thing that works for yeah. you. You know, like yeah. with the t-shirt thing, because I'm I'm a magician. I got my start in business as a magician. Mm. I thought, well, there's a lot of magicians that wear these t-shirts when they go to magic conventions. So I yeah. thought maybe that's a yeah. niche and you have yes, you know, yes. fun little cute uh, sayings on shirts. So yeah. if you can find that niche. I've seen people that do stuff like if someone is, uh, you find people that are really passionate about German shepherds or pit bulls or whatever. And you yeah. can target that audience and get them that are passionate enough to actually buy it. But it's discouraging when you think, oh, I'll just make a t-shirt and someone will buy it. That's not the truth, you know. You got to really align yeah, that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. With the, with the market, with the audience. That's correct. Yes. Yes. You and a lot of uh, online stuff is actually almost an impulse buy. You know, if people see it, they they think about it. They don't necessarily jump on it right away. But um, that's right. One of the nicer things with with doing stuff on Amazon is it's a trusted source. So when people see something from Amazon they're more apt to purchase it because it's trusted. Whereas, you know, if I've got my stuff on my own blog and they don't, they're not familiar with the brand, they're skeptical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. So how's the, uh, how's the convention business coming along? It's actually coming along pretty good. We've got, what I'm doing with it is traditionally we just work locally and we use local people to get on the phone and call but I'm mm -hmm. bringing in this digital marketing element of it. And I've got some very interesting ways of lead generation. If anybody's interested in generating leads local, in fact, yeah. this is my work national too, is I yeah. do a Facebook event and I connect the Facebook event with an Eventbrite um, sign up. And yes. that Eventbrite integrates with MailChimp and MailChimp has autoresponder campaigns. So I okay. advertise the Facebook event they opt in to Eventbrite that integrate it, that loads it into uh, Mailchimp, and then it's automated. So it yeah, works pretty slick. so so that is that is a model where you are taking a traditional business, right, and then leveraging on digital marketing to promote an existing brick and mortar business. Yes. Right. Right. Sure. So uh, so increasingly, you're going to see more and more businesses that. Uh, uh, have to have some digital strategies rather than just doing it the, the traditional way. Well, a lot of people have been trying uh, mm. the digital strategies and, you know, social media was this big thing that everybody's going to jump on yeah. and they got 10,000 Twitter followers and it's not true. It just doesn't work because people don't know who people are. So they don't put money into unknown people. So, that's why I like the event industry where you are local people and you can see, you know, uh, landmarks around the Minneapolis, yeah, Minnesota yeah. area. And they trust, you know, you ever heard of the mall of America? 
Yes, I heard about that. That's, that's here. Uh, that's a big giant mall. Yeah, so if I stand in front of the Mall of America, people see, oh, he's real, he lives there. Yes. And they, they're more of a trust factor. Yeah. And that's really very important. I see so many people that don't put their face on their, their stuff. And unless it's mm. a trusted brand, people, they're very skeptical. I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, uh, uh, maybe we don't have time to talk about this, but we can talk about it in the next, uh, the next conversation that we have, right? I'm looking at how businesses who traditionally build, traditionally build loyalty program, right? Mm -hmm. So what they do is they give a loyalty card. And then uh, they give them points and so on, and then they come back and uh, uh, you reward them on that basis, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so I'm developing essentially a new model where we are using digital marketing, we are using Facebook groups instead of trying to give points, right? Because the big issue with points and loyalty program, like exactly like what you say, is that you have a mechanism, but you don't have relationship between the business and the customer, right? right? So what you want to do is you want to have a group. You want to be able to talk to your customers. If you have a restaurant, what's the point of uh, just giving them points and expecting them to come back to redeem their points? You want to say, you know what? Why don't you guys join my Facebook group this week? I'm going to have uh, maybe this uh, five minutes thing. I'm going to talk to you about my menu for this week, right? And then that would encourage people to come back. So sure. I think that builds more loyalty than giving points away that, you know, doesn't have a lot of value. And for most people, it takes quite a large spending to earn sufficient points to be able to redeem for anything worthwhile. Right? And the tracking element of it, you know, you get multiple yeah. punch cards and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, that makes yeah. a lot of sense because in that uh, Facebook group, you could, you could do like a, sushi lovers group or something that's correct yeah but again they, they yeah. talk about sushi yeah. in different places that's correct places yes cool. and uh, uh, uh and they could raise awareness that you know this week uh we are trying out a new recipe right for all the loyal customers who come back right you're going to get a, a mm -hmm. additional discount there see that's what i think a lot of people don't do online is they they kind of move it away from the human factor whereas if you look at what we're doing now, this is almost like we're sitting at a coffee or a tea shop having a conversation. Yeah. So this, Except that you can't smell my coffee. I can pretend. <laughs> <laughs> That'll come someday without a smell of vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I think people need to realize is in business, generating the leads not that hard. I'm doing it with Facebook and Eventbrite and MailChimp. It's pretty easy to generate the lead. Yeah. It's yeah. the relationship. You know, that, that automated sequence where they see my name and I use the magic Brad brand. So they, mm. okay, I know who that guy is. I can Google him. I can see more. And I do a lot of uh, videos on YouTube and they can find me. And they can trust me a little bit. And then they will consider buying. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, right. So you got to bring it back into the, hu the, the human analogy of how this stuff really works, you know? Yeah. I agree with you on that. So speaking about that kind of thing, I don't like to do these too long because people, yeah. you know, so they used to do these webinars like they're two, three hours long. And yeah, that's right. You don't have time to do that. You got other things to do. And yeah. So, so I'm going to sign this one off and uh, we can stay online, but I'm just going to turn this one off and then. Uh, okay. And hopefully this thing recorded last time we had a little technical glitch and that's one thing that that's doesn't correct. happen in yeah. real life. Sometimes yeah. the internet works funny. So. <laughs> okay, Stanley, appreciate you taking okay, the time. Good. I'm going to sign this one off and beam it up to the universe. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Brett.